Welcome to the fifth uh, lecture of ninth week. This entire week we were looking at Fourier series and uh, Fourier transforms. So, let me start by reminding you of uh, what we studied as the Fourier series. This is the Fourier series and f of x is of course our arbitrary function. So, as you would remember a 0 by 2 represents the average of the function and the other terms the cosine and sine terms capture the oscillation about that average value. For a particular problem for you if your average is not very important for your purposes you could always set it to 0, but nevertheless you should keep in mind that there could be instances where the average would be important AMs and BMs can be written in terms of uh, an integral. Then we took the continuum limit so to speak, we went from Fourier series to Fourier transform. So, in this case we have a pair of functions, so given f of t, so here it is more convenient to think of your function as being a function of time, but it does not necessarily have to be a function of time. If that were so, in that case I have this pair of transforms, f of nu, nu is the frequency in such a case, capital F nu which is this is given by this integral that I have written here and it is simply the Fourier transform of f of t. In other words, I am looking at the same function in frequency space. So, the function is same, but it looks probably different in frequency space. The important part about this is that the function f of t need not be periodic. So, remember that when we wrote down this Fourier series, we explicitly assume that function f of x is periodic, but here we liberate ourselves from that periodicity requirement and similarly you can go the other way around, you can go from capital F of nu if a function is given in frequency space, you can go to represent the same function in time domain. So, that is called the inverse Fourier transform. With this information, now let us do three problems which is what I have planned for this lecture. First problem is finding the Fourier series for a half wave rectifier. Now, what does the half wave rectifier do for you? So, it will only keep keep the positive parts of this waveform. In other words, once the rectification has been done, our waveform will be simply this. Uh, so, it is a periodic function whose basic period is let us say this much going between 0 to 2 pi. Looking at the function, you can make some inferences without actually doing any calculation. For instance, you can see that the average of this function is not going to be 0. So, clearly the average is going to be somewhere here. It is not exactly a even or a odd function. So, here is my function f of x and even though I have specified the function in the basic unit lying between 0 and 2 pi, you should remember that it is a periodic function, it spans the entire real axis. Let us first calculate the average value of the function. If you remember this is our basic formula for a 0 the mean value of the function conveniently the value of the function between pi and 2 pi is 0. So, that would be f of x is h sin x 0 to pi sin x dx. The next quantity I want to find is of course, the a n's, a n's are given by 1 by pi 0 to 2 pi f of x cos n x dx. So, remember that these coefficients both a n and b n when you evaluate them through this integral, when the limits of the integral let us say in general go between some range which is l the factor that comes in front will be 1 divided by l by 2. So, for instance, in this case our x goes between 0 to 2 pi. So, the factor that 
comes there should be 1 divided by half of this value. So, half of this is simply pi, so which, I, which is why I have this 1 by pi factor in front of this integral. So, I need uh, this relation sin a cos b will be half of sin a plus b plus sin a minus b. I have done the integral and um, the limits are there to be put in. So, there were originally two terms, putting these two limits we get four terms. Before I take uh, LCM, let me also add uh, this that cos n plus 1 pi is equal to minus 1 to the power n plus 1. So, remember that n is an integer which is why we are able to do this. Now, we are ready to take the LCM. So, what I have done is I have taken minus n minus 1 to the power n outside in which case uh, you can put together uh, 4 of those terms like this and this plus 1 and plus 1 together will give you this plus 2 uh, term here. Again you will notice that n and minus n will cancel out here and then it is simply 2 in the numerator that multiplies minus 1 to the power n. So, the entire 2 can be taken out. So, now I have this uh, final expression for a n which will be minus h by pi into minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 into n. I have written the integral for b n. Again, we need to do the same thing. So, this integral will contribute only when this n is equal to whatever number is here in front of this x. So, in this case it happens to be 1. So, the only value for which this integral will be non-zero is if n is equal to 1, in which case and all other b n's are equal to 0 for n greater than 1. Now, we can put together all the results f of x is equal to there is b 1 alone. So, let me include that first plus. So, with all these let us reconstruct the function. Now, I can collect together all these terms and write the final expression. So, this is the final uh, result for our function. The next problem is um, is a problem where the function is defined only within a certain region. Here the function is f of x is cos square x and we have to find its uh, Fourier representation. So, let us first plot this function. So, here I have plotted for you the cos square x function. So, one point to note is that it is a even function that is very clear from the figure and basic periodicity would be from here to here which is going from 0 to pi. So, another thing you can infer is that of course, the average value of the function is not 0 and because it is a even function without doing any calculation you can say that all the b n coefficients are going to be 0 straight away for all n. So, with this let us calculate only the average value of the function and a n. So, here I have written the our standard formula for a 0 the average value of the function. Okay. So, I have put in the limits of the integral and it turns out that a 0 is 1. Now, let us calculate all other uh, a coefficients a n s. function is cos square x multiplied to cos n x d x. Again we replace cos square x by 1 plus cos 2 x divided by 2 and the whole thing must multiply to cos n x d x. So, both these integrals are easy to do especially the second 
integral you should uh, remember that this is like one of the formulas we saw on the very first day when we started looking at Fourier series. In general what is the integral of cos n x cos m x. So, the only term that would survive is when m is equal to n. So, looking at this integral it would appear that the only term that would survive from here is when n is equal to 2. And you can see that the first term here is an integral over cos n x that is going to give me sin n x divided by n and sin n x irrespective of what the value of n is n being an integer will be 0 both for x equal to pi and x equal to 0. So, the first integral is entirely 0. Clearly, we are headed towards a situation where all the a n's are 0 except 1 for which n is equal to 2. So, we will have a situation where uh, a 2 is equal to 1 by 2. So, the final result will be half plus half into cos 2 x and all other a n's will be 0 and b n's are also 0. So, we have the result that cos square x is equal to 1 plus cos 2 x by 2. Okay, it is not very surprising, this is simply one of the basic trigonometric identities. The problem here is I have uh, f of t which is a product of uh, two exponential functions, one is e power i 2 pi nu 0 t and then an exponentially decaying function in time, tau is some time constant. You would notice that this is simply the solution of a damped harmonic oscillator. Now, what I want is to find the Fourier transform of this. So, f of nu would be given by since time goes from 0 to infinity, we shall integrate from 0 to infinity f of t e power minus i 2 pi nu t dt. So, I have written it as e power minus some constants into t divide integrated over t. This integral is easy to do again simply an exponential integral f of nu would be a can be taken outside the integral and this result of integral should be evaluated between 0 and infinity. Now, you can see that if I put the upper limit t equal to infinity, the numerator will simply go to 0 and if I put the lower limit, it is going to give me 1 and uh, so the final result will be a divided by um, i 2 pi nu minus nu 0 plus 1 by tau. So, this is my f of nu and I will also use the fact that 2 pi nu is omega and 2 pi nu 0 is omega 0. Now, it is more convenient to look at it as what is called a power spectrum. So, we would like to calculate what is f star of nu times f of nu. So, that would give me the modulus square of this and that would be a positive definite function this i should have been inside. So, let me directly write the result of this uh, f nu square and that is going to give me. So, instead of using nu I have used omega, we know the relation between nu and omega. To make a little more sense of this, it is better to see how it looks if I plot it. So, this is how the function would look like the Fourier transform of a function whose amplitude is exponentially decaying. So, this was my f of t and here I have plotted the, the power spectrum. The peak occurs when nu equal to nu 0. In other words, it is equivalent to saying that uh, nu 0 or the frequency nu 0 contributes most to this function. All other frequencies contribute relatively lesser and there is a decay around new zero. <laughs>